she don't have that that strength. She, the air was too thin. Very, because all she knows how to do is address the mess. But I'm not being shady. You just started this. <laughs> Correct. And a fag is always going to finish. And so because we know that they get they, they have their eyes and ears open, honey. By, oh, the, yes. by the time that mayor sat down there. Baby, because when I had said that last show, whenever that was, I said, girl, they should have had somebody else in the room when Candace Owens was there because that was the, the, the most quiet I have seen that lady sit in that chair since she's been over there at the breakfast club. You said my jokes? Uh-huh. She, she, she was out of her realm. She was out of her comfort zone. And so she sat there on mute. But when I tell you that lady, what's her name? O Ole? Uh-huh. She had pulled the mayor. We were supposed to do this story a couple weeks ago. The mayor of New York City was at the breakfast club. And I just want you all to hear this little clip right here. Oh, oh, that's right. We got to play it right here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. We we looking at Mo. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. Mo. I had to I had to quickly turn my head. Mo, right, right. We was about to, we was about to Mo. fry him up. We was about yeah. to send. We was about to send you back to Africa. <laughs> Don't do that. This one. No, it's, it's this right here. Okay, yeah. All right. New York is is give them the facts, mm -hmm. not give them what people are spewing out there. Mm -hmm. The facts the facts are clear, as I've always stated. We are the safest big city in America. And as people talk about reporting these the reports that come out and reporting how things are done, no one wants to report the fact that everyone is saying across the globe, New York is the safest big city in America. Are we trending the right way, Olympia? Mm -hmm. I think, I think that New York, I don't dispute that New York is safe. What I dispute is how Mayor Adams' own rhetoric is the reason why people don't feel safe. I agree, I agree that New Yorkers don't feel safe because okay. of the way that NYPD, the Post, and Mayor Adams go about sensationalizing okay. crime. And I'm asking you to talk about it differently. Okay. Uh, and listen, and you have a right to your opinion and your belief. We, You and I have a philosophical disagreement. You. That's many. It's not many about the philosophical the disagreement. Left, many people on the far left disagree with me. You know, many people on the far left, they said, Eric, people should be allowed to sleep on the streets um, no matter what. They should be allowed to sit on your stoop and inject themselves with drugs. They should be allowed to go in stores and steal whatever they want. They shouldn't have to pay on the subway system. They should be allowed to carry a gun and be able to come out the next day. Like, people disagree with me all the time. Earlier you asked that me to point out the opinion. rhetoric. But Earlier also, you <laughs> asked me to point out specifically what you say to fair monger about crime, so I just would like to say, Exhibit A, like what you literally uh, just did. You continue to say in this that New York is the safest big city while simultaneously you are the one sensationalizing the crime. Facts. I point out facts. Which all is I a know, fact? Is it safe or is it not? Is, all I know is she tore his ass up. <laughs> we, I just pulled a small clip because I, I really would like for you to go and watch it. But we just pulled a small clip of what she said. Basically, he was just trying to say it's the safest city in the country. Yeah, we know that's not Every true. time I look on social media, when I tell you somebody is, uh, th that guy on TikTok was running around beating white women up and h hitting them in their face. It, it, was, it was more than one uh, guy, actually. It was several. I think they showed like three oh. different guys who was going around just hitting white girls in their face. But they had their head down on their cell phone. And they just put, just hit they were just punching them. And then, like, people getting thrown on the train tracks while the train is coming. People getting acid thrown in their face. Like, it is a fucking mess up there in New York. And so she's basically saying, you, you ran this campaign that, you know, this is safe city and we're going to put all these cops in the, uh, in the train station. But people aren't necessarily feeling safe because you have these cops there. People are feeling alarmed. They're like, well, what the fuck is going on? There's all these cops down here. And so she's basically calling him out on all of this stuff that he's trying to act like doesn't exist. And she said, stop and frisk is more, um, they're more vigilant with that since Bloomberg, a former mayor. Oh. Under, so she's saying that they've had more arrests on, like stop and frisk under this mayor than they did under Bloomberg, hmm. a white man. Is that why you won't live in New York, Craig? Because you don't want to be stopped and frisked? Girl, I, w I wouldn't be on the train. So let's start there. <laughs> so, so he ain't getting stopped or frisked. The elitist in you wouldn't be on the train. Well, well call it what you want. <laughs> I'm going to need a car. I'm going to need a car service. Sweetheart, when I arrive in, 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 when, when I arrive in, in New York City, when I touch down, somebody's already gathering my bag. Come, come on. Because see, what I'm not doing, listen, I don't, I don't do the train. In a black car. You know, Mo, because they were gathering your bags, too. Oh, yes, most definitely. You've, li you've lived the life. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm not lying. No, no, not at all. At all. At all. Yeah, I don't, I don't play with the <laughs> place in New York. 
That's not how I move around. I don't know that New York experience. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting on the train. I'm sorry. Because if I live in a castle. <laughs> wait, wait, go ahead, Craig. On a hill. <laughs> I damn sure ain't getting on no motherfucking train. With a swimming pool and an iron gate <laughs> and a service quarter in the back. <laughs> ah, I'm definitely not. Oh, my God. Doing the train. Uh, yeah, I don't see you on no train. That bad. At all. I don't see you on no train. Sweetie, at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hate to have to ride that train going over here to motherfucking Hartsville, Atlanta Airport. Look. But she pulled out facts. She pulled out data. She pulled out statistics. She deferred him to all of this stuff. He acted like he didn't know what was going on. He wasn't clear about what was happening. She said, I know, you, I know you've seen these reports. He really just kind of glossed over everything. She he really saying. did. And then at one point, he turned his back to her. and He started talking to Charlemagne. That is the most dismissive, disrespectful thing that a person can do. And it was almost like he was trying to mansplain a lot to her. I didn't like that at all, but she was holding her ground. Baby, her vernacular is immaculate. Listen, she and I, she did an interview with me. I love her. Yeah. I love the way that she is, she's very knowledgeable. She puts me so much in the mind of a female version of you. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you were about to go down that street and turn. And I did. <laughs> I knew you were coming up on my cul-de-sac. You did. I did. <laughs> Is it a castle? I know. Mm -hmm. A little Shangri-La. I've been to yours. <laughs> Girl, let me tell you something. We are, I'm, not talk, I'm not sitting up here talking about money with you no more. I didn't have three people call me this past week asking me for money. Listen. <laughs> Starting at 5000 and higher. I don't give a fuck how much money I got. I don't got it for you. <laughs> Bitch, my bills are due all the time. Right. I'm like, I sit, I'm sitting here with invoices on my desk. My bills are due all the time. I don't have nothing for nobody asking me for. <laughs> What's if, in the cup is for me. What comes out of the cup is for y'all. Correct. And if don't nothing come out of the cup, it's not for y'all. <laughs> There's nothing to give. Let me tell you what a friend of mine said. He said, Bitch, I got you up to $20. Ask me for $21. Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll get, what, how I got you is I'll give you a pair of knee pads, bitch. <laughs> Cause that's how I made my first fortune was knee with knee pads, girl. You better get out there and get you some. That's right. But yeah, no, she is a um, she is an attorney, so she definitely was timing up for him for sure. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, uh, just not hilarious was not there that day. They ain't got nothing to do with me. But thank you, Breakfast Club, for watching and listening. <laughs> and, and, and I and I really do think. That they either need to have her step in or someone of that caliber when, when it's politics. Because I really feel like I need a do-over with that Candace Owens. Yeah, I do. I believe that. Because they be just let her slide on through. Mm -hmm. So you think they should have... Uh, they should, uh, they should, or Amanda Seals. Or, Amanda or Seals. them both. Right. Some sort of a political pundit. Yes. Let, let, let just go on maternity leave to have her baby. <laughs> Let her go on maternity leave and never come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, girl, let her have a job. This show, listen, she ain't nothing but a female, uh, a female uh, Charlemagne. She's well, that's what I'm saying. It, 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 there's not enough balance there in terms of intellect. And I'm really not being funny when I say that. She's a female Charlemagne. She is. That's why he like her so. What's interesting is when Charlemagne does his own stuff separate from that, or he appears on like these different news shows, or whether it's The View or whatever, he really he's is. He's much more elevated. He's a, uh, yes, he's yes. a lot more polished. But it's yes. like he gets over there and, and just loses all kinds of. Well, he's comfortable there. And right. I, and I think he knows I think he knows what brings in the views. And Envy don't know a damn thing. I can't even believe he went to Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> He be so ill prepared. <laughs> what did what did Emmy do to you, Chris? He did nothing. He just be ill prepared. <laughs> he listen. Iyanla Van Zant was on there one time. He didn't know how to say that lady name. Does, does he know much about real estate? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why he can't think. Cause he got caught up in that shit, that real estate shit. Does he know much about real estate? Maybe that's why he can't focus. <laughs> you a mess. He never has decent questions. Well, he wasn't there when I was there, so I don't know. I never, I never met him. Oh. Oh. He wasn't there when I was there. Oh. Only Charlemagne and uh, and uh, Angela. Angela uh -huh. That's when Angela was still there. Yeah. 
Now that was a good show. You watched it, of course. If you bitch, I called you. You after. called me and said, "Bitch, you." I said, "Bitch, you ate that." Bitch, you ate. You said, "Bitch, you ate." Yes, you did. Yes, you. You said, "Bitch, you ate." It was that interview. But which which happened first? That one or the Monet? Uh, what, it was Monet it? first, and then that. Because when I when that happened, I called you. I said. Your interviewing is, is elevating. Yes, and you said, girl, honey, you're, you're definitely maneuvering through the spaces now, Yes, girl. I said, your interviewing is <laughs> elevating. You, I said, I really... You found your footing, girl. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah, so and by the time mean... by the time you got over there to the breakfast club, they didn't stand a chance. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. And should they allow me to return, they will definitely not stand a chance again. Oh, fire Brimstone. No, because oh. I'm not going in. I wouldn't go in there with hostility because I don't have oh, okay. it. I don't have any. I didn't go in there with hostility before. I think this, I think unhilarious would call in when you come. Probably so, but she doesn't have the skill set to sit down and have a conversation with me. Because when I was in a peaceful mode, a peaceful setting, and offer, and she called out all those other people who I tried to peacefully mm -hmm. reach the hand out to before it even elevated into a space that she caused it to go. Mm -hmm. And that's why that girl Mona, my girlfriend Mona, bitch from Don't Call Me Walker, tore her ass up because <laughs> she didn't need to even call. She didn't even need to call that girl out. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I right. reached out to these people privately to have a private set to be like to squash it because it wasn't nothing to even to be squashed. Cause she like made it, she made it seem like you were scared mm -hmm. and you were trying. To yeah, I was trying out. to do this stuff. Yeah. Nah, because girl, I really didn't want to claw you in your throat. And girl, <laughs> you know, two or three bitches told him, told you they. They pumped you and told you that you had read me because you used I'm not your brother or your, your sister or your brother. Girl, that was not no read because I acknowledge that I have titties at the top, dick at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But have we acknowledged those punks fucking that nigga? They what? Have we acknowledged those punks and that nigga? Have we acknowledged the trauma and experiences that I called out? Have we acknowledged that? Because I acknowledge that I got titties at the top, dick at the bottom, and that my name was formerly Tim, and I cashed checks. Your name was formerly what? Formerly Tim. Oh, okay. Miss Tim. <laughs> bitch. Oh, Miss Tim. And I cashed checks in those names. Uh -huh. So therefore, you ain't reading me. Okay. When I call this, when I call mamas to the mat. <laughs> Where'd you call them? To the mat. And say, let's, let's, let's tap on these traumas that you're going through. Uh-huh. Yeah. Why you feel the way that you do. Mm-hmm. And you didn't have to be intellectually competent to have that time. Because I met you on your level. The mess. <laughs> and for those girls that talk about she read me, girl, you hoes don't have a pamphlet. The only thing y'all read is those past through bills on your counter, bitch. You could never read me. The only thing a lot of you girls are reading, bitch, when you talking about some having something to say about me being a man, are those past due bills on your counter, bitch. You're not equipped. You know, we had moved past Essence so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I had forgot to talk about him. So, oh. some of you may recognize him. His name is Rich. Um, he is the, he, okay, so he owns Shea Moisture. A lot of you used his products, and a lot of you were really upset. When, I, I, I think once they merged or something happened. I can't remember what happened. You all may remember. But his name is Rick, Richelieu Dennis. But he owns Shea Moisture. Um, and I think, I, I remember what happened. They ended up coming out with a, a line for like, they started doing their advertising with all these next to white women. When black women had built that company, black women with kinky hair and this, that, and the third, you know what I mean? Women who look black of all different hues. And then they started coming out with a different line. And the marketing was all geared to like biracial or almost white women. Formula was all fucked up. But at any rate, he owns Shea Moisture, and then he's the one who acquired Essence Magazine, and most recently, Revolt. Revolt. Oh. He's the anonymous. He's the anonymous. I mean, the anonymous. Well, he ain't anonymous no Not more. Because there's a fag on the job. Oh. But listen. <laughs> so back to what I said to you guys a moment ago, that I had a bunch of friends who worked for Essence. They were still working there when he <clears throat> seceded. And what happened is there are issues with him now you can grab the allegedly sign. I can't find it, but go ahead. Where he has been uh, <laughs> doing the things with some of the women there. Oh, let me oh. get the real one. Yeah, please. please. <laughs> and there are lots of women there. It's upside down. There are women there. Th th this is coming straight from my source. 
There are a lot of women there who, who, who want to file charges against him and they want to go to HR, but they cannot because why? His wife is the head of HR. Oh, are you serious? And his sister is, is the head of another department. So it's just a family business, basically. Nepotism. So the people are afraid, the women are afraid Dear Lord. to file a claim. Damn. Girl, what's our next story? It's a family affair. <laughs> <laughs> so you think his do you think his wife knows about all this? Girl, listen. It's a pig's pussy pork. It's a pig's pussy pork. It's a pig's pussy pork. You just gonna hold up them signs? It like, all depends on what kind of pig you talk about. <laughs> Cause I've been likened to a pig on numerous occasions, bitch. Sweet meat that brings the heat. I thought you said you were forbidden meats. Uh, I thought you said you were forbidden meats. Is it pork forbidden? <laughs> pork is forbidden. <laughs> You're right. You're right. That's true. That's why that's why we don't eat that's why us Africans usually don't eat pork. Oh listen, I know a few Africans that eat pork, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey babe. <laughs> you know why? I know a few Africans that eat pork. <laughs> they like the pork belly the most. <laughs> well, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, 